Never before in all our history have these forces been so united against one candidate as they stand today. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hatred. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is another Saturday, and it is, I don't know, I have to say this. It doesn't really look like it's the end of the corporate age anytime soon. Uh, we've been playing this song for years. But we've got some work with the government to do first, and then we can move on to that. Small steps, we're eating an elephant, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it is a Saturday. Good morning. And uh, the card, knocking down the house, or knock down the house. If you have not seen that, I watched it last night. It's a pretty amazing documentary and uh, pretty powerful. And uh, I just want to remind everybody before we talk to Zaina Day, who is with us today right now, um, microphone, that uh, Brand New Congress was actually the first group to approach AOC. Um, and her brother was the one that, that uh, endorsed her. And uh, I think it's kind of cool that we had these groups, Brand New Congress, Justice Democrats, or several others, uh, that were able to organize and help pool our resources to find candidates like AOC. And so I'm really excited to have uh, Zaina with us today. Yes, the B is silent. We learned that, did not know. So now we know how to say that. Um, and we have a full house. We've got Amos mm -hmm. here. We've got a lot of people here. And, and But real quick, before I, I bring everybody else on in the big five shot, good morning, all of you, everybody showing up. I do want to say there's links in, this, in the description of this YouTube video. And if you go there, please click on the link when we're done with the show and share Shawhead vs. Pelosi. It's an amazing campaign video that they just released yesterday. And it's just starting to take off on the YouTube channel. We'll be doing a big push with that later on. Yes, I am personally volunteering for Shawhead's campaign, full disclosure, and so is Laura Live and Good. Mm -hmm. This video is awesome. It's amazing. And, and we just need your help because Shahid is a true progressive. And he ran against Nancy last time. And he's going to take it this time. So mm -hmm. there. But without further ado, good morning, everybody. We have Amos, and Laura, and Marcus, and Zaina Day from Brand New Congress. Thank you for mm -hmm. being here, Zaina. Hey, thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for all the work you do with Brand New Congress. It's really awesome. Uh, AOC and many others, right? Mm -hmm. We have 31 candidates in um, 2018 across 18 states, and uh, we garnered 1.6 million votes total. That's primary and general included, but um, yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, you were very instrumental in helping us get our first interviews with AOC and I believe Paula Jean and Amy. I, I only wish we had gotten Corey in there so we could have, you know, you could have boasted the, you know, the full quadra there. But uh, it's it's been it's such a pleasure to meet you in person yeah. and to, to hear. Um, I, I think uh, yeah, we've got a slide, John. I think that's got a little bit of what Zana's background is and how you know, yeah. she came to be. So how did, how did you get involved with, with uh, BNC thing? Oh, before I get to that, I wanted to thank you guys for talking with our candidates. You know, grassroots candidates don't get a lot of media coverage. Rachel Lears, when she covered Knock Down the House, you know, mm -hmm. she um, she had a, a, guy, a zeitgeist, a, a moment in time, and you guys were able to capture that as well. And um, if it wasn't for media like Uphill Media and um, some other progressive media outlets that are out there that were willing to talk to our candidates, they wouldn't have gotten very much um, of an opportunity to to talk to people um, through through media. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. That means a lot. We, mm -hmm. we all work together. It takes a lot of hands. And mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. 
Thank you. Well, it gave us a very personal look at the primary as well, because we were meeting these people. And so we had vested interests in races all across the country, not just in our respective states. And we, you know, we, we cried when they lost. And I think everybody knows where they were when we saw AOC's face when she realized that she'd won. And that was one of the most inspiring uh, moments of the 2018 campaign and that kept us going, even though the ranks were greatly thinned after the primaries finished. Um, yeah. So anyway, so I'm really interested, though, Zena, in how you know, maybe combine it with a little bit of a history of how Brand New Congress actually started and then how you came to be involved with it as an organization and how you've grown with it. Sure. So um, Brand New Congress began in 2016 during the Bernie Sanders primary. So BNC was around, I will say, just a little bit before um, some other orgs cropped up like Our Revolution and Indivisible. But we were definitely all part of this momentum that was um, gaining up behind progressive values in part because of the energy surge that Bernie brought, right? The idea that we can finally run without accepting corporate PAC dollars. Oh, mm -hmm. this is not necessarily impossible that we can ourselves reshape the fake face of, you know, Congress, the face of our local house, state houses, um, our school boards. But to do all of that, we actually have to vote and we right. have to organize strong grassroots campaigns. Mm -hmm. So BNC was founded on three fundamental ideas. If a if Bernie's elected, he's going to need a Congress to help get, you know, progressive policies passed. Mm -hmm. If Bernie's not elected and Hillary's elected, then we'll definitely still need it. <laughs> but if Trump's elected, then we're yeah. going to definitely need a Congress to hold um, the executive branch accountable in maybe a different way than we've ever had before, which we've right. seen is absolutely the truth. Um, with that in mind, there were a few people such as Corbin Trent and Shoykat Chakravarti. Corbin Trent is now the communications director for Alexander Cortez, mm -hmm. and um, Shoykat Chakravarti is her chief of staff. Mm -hmm. um, Alex Rojas, who is now executive director of um, Justice Democrats, Nassim Thompson, and a dozen others um, had decided to kind of go on their way and start this project toward the end of Bernie's campaign. Mm -hmm. So they launched a 100-city tour they went to 100 cities around the country and they asked people nominate who you think might be an organizer or someone in your district that you think could represent you and this isn't an idea that um a party helicopters in someone to represent them out of state you know right. carpet baggers that have already have a million dollars in corporate donations out of nowhere and they yeah. drop out, they parachute out of the sky and run in your district i call them the corporate creatures yes <laughs> exactly. exactly the idea was was to have um the idea was i'm sorry excuse me mm. i'm a single mother by the way <laughs> <laughs> okay kid bombs right, uh cat bombs i'm sorry fine. about that <laughs> Um, so the idea was to have people nominate folks in their own districts mm -hmm. to um, to run so that we as voters have a choice and we don't have to wait for the party to choose for us. Mm -hmm. And then they did a call for nominations, 10,000 poured in. AOC was someone who came across our desk. Her brother had nominated her. And um, Isra Allison, who was um, the former executive director of Brand New Congress, actually picked up the phone, um, made a phone call to AOC and said, hey, have you ever thought about running for Congress? And that's wow. sort of how all of that started. And uh, at the time she hadn't, she had just gotten back from DePaul um, protesting there and she was just phenomenal. She had the spirit and the gut like so many of our other candidates did. Mm -hmm. And uh, she decided to take up the mantra and run and built her own fierce, um, competitive campaign against mm -hmm. the fourth most powerful man in, in DC. That was inspiring. And I'd like, I, we put up on the slide right now, everything we do is done by regular people. And that, if that isn't just the heart of the progressive movement right there, there is no creatures stand out like sore thumbs, you know, in a progressive grassroots movement. You can just, you can recognize them and they, they don't last long. And so everyone from like from here, I mean, we are, we are, you know, four people from, you know, 
two countries and and four cities and and BNC is the is the same way. And I'm glad you know you're in mm -hmm. Kentucky. So it's like it's um, it, regular people are doing this and not and not getting paid a lot if anything to do this. <laughs> it's it's done from the heart. And that sounds like that's where you came. You started as a volunteer. With yes. BNC. So um, BNC, we are primarily volunteer led and our volunteers were all over the country, just like the this panel we have here today. You know, we, we have folks who are expats who are living overseas, who are American citizens. Mm -hmm. um, but they're still wanting to help with politics. We have um, people who live on the West Coast, the East Coast, Middle America. And so we have a very diverse um, community of volunteers. Mm -hmm. After the 26, 2016 election, I'm a reporter myself and a, a public relations. I went to school for public relations and journalism in southeastern Kentucky. Yay, PR. <laughs> I'm a PR professional. Oh, you M M P R? No, PR. I'm in PR. Oh, as well. oh public relations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, because of that, you know, I follow social trends and it, if it wasn't already evident, it was evident to me that I, I deeply felt that Trump was going to win, but I also saw that there was something in deep need in our country for regular working people to represent us um, in our districts, people who don't accept corporate PAC money, people who aren't bought and sold. So for a year and a half, I had been working on a project called Big Purple. And what I was doing there was contacting people of all different partisan bents and, and trying to figure out what types of progressive values can reach across the aisle, mm -hmm. but also looking at possibly building up something myself that was similar to Brand New Congress. Well, someone introduced me to Brand New Congress, and I thought, why reinvent the wheel? <laughs> why not? volunteer for this amazing organization who is already doing the thing. Mm -hmm. and so I volunteered in April of 2017 and it was, it was shortly before they um, had most of their summits and brought most of their folks onto their slate. And I've been there ever since. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That's awesome. Well, I, so tell us what, what feels different about 2020 versus the, the your original slate of 31 that uh, ran in 2018? Great question. So I think the biggest thing is that in 2018, this had never been done before, right? Mm -hmm. This is right. just a crazy idea. Concepts such as Medicare for all were considered fringe. Right. The Green New Deal, when we ran on that mm -hmm. in, uh, in 2016 and we were developing that platform, that mm -hmm. sounded like a pipe dream right. uh, to a lot of folks because they hadn't heard that before. Mm -hmm. So one of the, there's a couple of major differences. And one of them is that we and other organizations like ours really helped to move the needle on policy. We were the first national organization to come out and say that we support the abolition of ICE mm -hmm. because it's expensive. People are um, not trained properly for the organization. And let's face it, it's just a brute force deportation machine without any consideration for the structure of law, um, courts, protecting people, human rights. Mm -hmm. So we came out boldly and said, this needs to go. Right. And in 20, um, 2018, we found that there were several candidates that decided to pick up the mantra that were our candidates and others across the country. But now when presidential elections I would presidential democratic presidential candidates are coming across the bar. They're being asked questions such as, do you support the abolition of ice? Do you right. support Medicare for all? Mm -hmm. Do you support tuition free college? Mm -hmm. And it was organizations like ours that made that possible. Right. Because if it wasn't for this movement. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have moved the needle enough. We would still be talking about health care with an, with a buy in option. Right. Right. Um, we would still be talking about trade schools only, and we wouldn't be talking about funding our state universities. Right, right. Um, so we were clear. talking about immigration reform, but we're mm -hmm. definitely not talking about abolishing ICE. So I think that that's a major shift. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing that I had discovered is that it wasn't only us, of course, that had candidates ran hundreds of, of progressive candidates ran across the country. Mm -hmm. And so there's a tremendous amount of lessons learned because we really haven't done this before. Politics are used to being played in the political sphere where you start a campaign, you do 
300 hours of call time to your corporate donors. You get a ton of corporate money and then you pay the DCCC consulting groups to mm-hmm. come in and manage your campaign, right? That's, right. that's the structure that's been forever. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing with grassroots small dollar campaigns is that we're trying to shift that dynamic, right? And at New Congress, we're bringing candidates together, not just endorsing them with a rubber stamp, but what we're building is a community of candidates. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that this community of candidates can lean on one another. They can learn lessons from each other. They can be present for one another. Um, so what worked for your campaign in 2017, um, Corey Bush in Missouri first, or we can ask Amy Valella, you know, what worked for you in Nevada? What didn't work? And then the candidates can communicate and cross pollinate and learn from one another to build out stronger campaigns. Also, when you cast a ballot in Congress, when you cast your vote, you're not just casting it for your district, right? Mm-hmm. Right. You're you're passing legislation that affects the entire country. Right. Why, you know, are we isolating all of our candidates to, you know, all of our representatives to their little, you know, their little area? And they're not having exposure with other candidates really to understand what's happening across the country so that they can actually come together and find a resolution such as the Green New Deal resolution that holistically approaches the problems in these country in this country. Right. And until we can do that, I think that um, we're not really going to get anywhere with legislation that, that has wide sweeping impact. I love that idea. And then we saw that when the freshman candidates came in, that they already knew each other. They'd already yeah. worked together. They already had a common bond. I mean, the one thing that came out of the movie was when AOC called, I can't remember who she called, was if it was Paula or Amy, about saying, look, we need to get 100 of us nominated to get one person to win. And just the support that they gave each other. And it was having you know, interviewed several of the people, seeing them all come together at in D.C. and putting on their purple shirts together for the same time and thinking, oh, my gosh, what a fun group that would you know, be to be a part of, and I would you know, have loved to have been there for inst- instance. So that bonding, and, and, that's, and that's where, and also for those of us who follow them, like on progressive news shows, we all feel again, that, that buy-in to, and, and you know, skin in the game for elections all across the country that makes us feel much more unified as progressives and gives us hope, if, if not oh, for our district, right. for other districts. So, yay. What'd you say, Zena? Oh, no, it's just exciting it's that exciting. you yeah. are inspired as well, you know, oh, just yeah. like that. because we, we see it from the inside. Sometimes we don't realize because we know we're inspired. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. the movie, the movie has really shown me that Knock Down the House has shown me that this story is a story that galvanizes people mm-hmm. and inspires folks. We've yeah. seen tremendous um feedback from the film of Mm -hmm. course when rachel lears the director started following us in 2016 she had a shoestring budget right a ramen noodle budget oh totally (laughs) she was traveling the country on that she's a mother um her husband would come with her they would they would take their little their little boy their toddler around Mm -hmm. with them and they just had, you know, like the, the heavy rig crew, one editor with them. And uh, sometimes it would be Rachel and her husband. Yeah. They're doing like this, this grunt work um, style journalism, true, mm-hmm. um, what I would call true um, documentary yeah. work, right? Yeah. It was so old school. It reminded me of some of the, the first 1970s documentaries yeah. that were during the, the green movement back then. Yeah. And, Right. It rings of, of truth. And, you know, John, do we have that the video that's on the Brand New Congress page that kind of introduces BNC and shows a little bit of the movie? About a minute? Yeah. A Give me one second love, to set I'd it love up. to play play that. Yeah, I think that I think that would be awesome. I mm-hmm. uh, I yeah, I just want to say for me, same thing. I uh, uh, I watched the movie last night and I was it's bittersweet because I was amazed and inspired and and at the same time like I can't believe this is what we have to do to you know save our democracy it's 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 sad that we have to go through this but then it, I, I 
my favorite feeling and all was like, you know what? Brand new Congress didn't get her elected and New York's 14th didn't just get her elected. Like all of America worked together and all these groups worked together to get her elected. And that's what it was like, ah, now I feel like I was really a part of that. And we just weren't some, you know, troops along the line. So it was really nice. Um, it's a movement. It's, it's definitely a movement. No single group. Um, it's going to take all of us. It takes an army to get this done. So it is absolutely. And now what I'm trying to do is get that video set up because I okay, wasn't. While you ready do that, I've it. got a quick question for Zayn. Good. Do that. Um, <laughs> uh, somebody in the chat wondered if Paula Jean is going to run for office. And I'm friends with Paula Jean on Facebook, and I know that she's still trying to decide what she wants to do. But are there other people from the first class that are that are um, coming back for a second run that you know of? There will be. I can't make any official announcements. Oh, but uh, will I know, I know. I'm sorry. Once I make it <laughs> official, so I would need to get them a heads up. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we do. We have some familiar faces um to be looking for that ran in twenty twenty. Um I can tell you there are some folks like um Adrian Bell here, Anthony Clark, who have already announced okay, there we we've already, interviewed we've interviewed both of them. So check. Yes. check. And so um, we are we are definitely looking forward to making some more official announcements in the in mid May. Mm -hmm. but we, we are currently, as I have mentioned, we do ask for nominations from across the country. So we did the same thing for in twenty the end of twenty eighteen and into twenty nineteen, and we've gotten hundreds of nominations um, right. across the country. Oh, I see an AOC cut out there, mm -hmm. but anyway, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes. We have hundreds of nominations from across the country coming in. So right now what we're doing is something similar that we did in 2016, and that's picking up the phone and calling these folks. Right. And we have met some amazing people. We've talked to, so far in our round zero, we've talked to almost 75 people. Wow, good. Um, and, well, in our round one call, our first wow. phone call, our round zero, we probably went through almost 300 people. And so nice. it's, it's, it's a process that helps us to narrow down um, who we would like to bring on to the slate. Are you going to do a road tour again like you did last time? Not yet. Um, one thing that we definitely need is we need to raise some funds. We mm -hmm. saw that our fundraising had, had dipped off in um 2016 after or 2018 after the elections which i had heard happens with every group um mm -hmm. and so we are looking to boost up some funds so that we can do some more on the ground outreach mm -hmm. but also so that we can have one or two more of those summits that like we had in the past where we can bring candidates mm -hmm. together go over trainings and um i i believe that that has a lot to do with building yeah this caucus is actually bringing these people together face to face as well. I think as you announce your slate, because right now it's kind of a blank, it's a, it's a blank slate. So people are, okay, what, what is it going to? But I hope you've got a boost. I know I added uh, BNC as a, a you know, small part of my monthly donation budget after, after watching the movie. It's like, okay. And I hope, so I hope that that is, the movie does create a ground. You, you don't shout BNC loud, which is nice. It's not, it's it, it, it's obviously there, but it's it's uh, it's subtle. Um, but I hope that this is you know getting you're getting more in, you know inquiries and more attention because of the movie. So well, Corey Bush is our first endorsed candidate for oh, the Yeah. Oh, okay. so there's the okay. Great. Well, we've got the video teed up, and, and Corey opens it. So let's let's watch that. All right. Here we go. In chaotic times is when true leaders arise. It is not doing times of comfort. So many people aren't making it, and it's a direct result of the type of representation they get. The health of one community directly impacts the health of another community. We have flawed laws now that discriminate against people, that bar the success of people. All of us are regular, everyday Americans. We've got teachers, we've got veterans, we've got scientists. When I became a part of Brand New Congress, it was no longer just me running for Congress. It was us. We all do whatever we can to help each other out. We give each other advice, resources. By knocking on doors, 
by having conversations, by phone banking. Our legislators are bought. They ask for money from the same industries, the fossil fuels, the insurers, the pharmaceuticals. I don't have anybody writing me a $75,000 check. I have gotten over 8,000 small dollar donations. That's really the choice that we have right now. Power in the hands of thousands and millions of voters or a very few financial elite. Donors before your community. That's yeah. You go in as a group that has the ability to move a voting block. We will represent people and not politics. Repeal and replace Congress, all of them. Maybe not all of them. We'll keep five, <laughs> 20. <laughs> That's awesome. I and if you that. guys didn't recognize at least a dozen people that we interviewed in that clip, you weren't paying attention. Because dang, it's like, oh my gosh, Lindsay, oh my God, Anthony. It's like, I know. That <laughs> anyway. was awesome. Yeah, I like that. Okay. I just want to give a shout out to one of our volunteers, David O'Brien. He actually traveled the country to um, meet those candidates and to get that footage and yeah. the footage from our um, summits to put those that video together. So, okay. Well, how can people help? Where do, I'm, I'm going to drop your, obviously, the band, brand new Congress website in uh, chat, and that will be in the description of this video. Uh, but, you know, what do you need? You know, is it really just money at this point, or do you need volunteers? What is, what is oh, your yeah. I, volunteers, um, donations help, nominations. So, we are currently looking for nominations. If you know someone great in your district that you would like to run, Brand New Congress is looking to run more women, more people of color, and more folks who are regular working folks who have had struggles in their lives. Um, maybe the community organizer that you know that used to be homeless and now right. started a homeless shelter. Right. Or um, someone who's a full-time nurse and they've started a um, freelance health clinic to help out their communities. Um, someone who's just an amazing full-time school teacher, a union organizer, whoever you might know that is, is out there in your community doing good work that you think would be a great voice for you, um, please go to www.brandnewcongress.org and under our nominations um, form, you can nominate... Um, whoever you would like, and we are going through those nominations right now, and so you may see a familiar face in a couple of months on our slate. That's awesome. That's awesome. Excellent. Thank well, you thank so much, you Dana. So much. This yeah. was this was really really great to get uh, caught up with you, and we are looking forward to seeing what your peeps do. Yeah, yeah. and you know you know folks can volunteer and nominate on or volunteer and donate online as well, and we are absolutely taking volunteers. We need people to help out with these campaigns. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people on the ground. We're looking for folks in their districts, but we're also looking for folks. There's a lot that you can do now, um, just online to help a candidate that you can help candidates all over the country if you volunteer with brand new Congress and you can help their campaigns, you can reach out to voters, you can help them organize. So please hop on and um, volunteer with groups like ours um, to help this movement in 2020 because I think if we all band together, then we can definitely win and move the needle. Excellent. Absolutely. And amplify on social media, you know, follow all the candidates, uh, re retweet what they say, listen, you know, they are a great source of, of news and perspective uh, from the grassroots. So that's a, an important uh, thing we can do for them as well. And John and I are talking to you, you know, we had mentioned about us helping candidates, you know, polish up their online interviewing, you know, setups and skills and things like that. And we, we're looking forward to, Second. please, if, you, if someone needs help, send them our way. We'll help. Yeah. yeah thanks, guys. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. That's what we do. We need to build a bench, right? <laughs> and part of that is starting with the, you know, you got the minor league players that need to get into the major leagues eventually. Mm -hmm. So we need to get them yeah. all trained and ready to go. This is, it's fun. We, yeah. We're building infrastructure, everybody. This yes. Is, this is what it is, right? So. Well, you guys helped um, majorly last time you were, you were some of the first media groups our candidates talked to. You mm -hmm. know, you were, I believe, the first interview that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez had. Second. We were right Second. after oh, Jimmy, Dore. Jimmy Dore. Oh, she had Jimmy before you guys. I remember you booked oh. on 
Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we were like a we week ended up talking to her, I think, three at least three times. And, yeah. Uh, and she was, and every time she just, she was just getting more and more powerful. So. And like I said, now she's out of our league. Yeah. We'll never yeah, talk to her again. <laughs> she's, she's off, right? I'm still so. friends with her on Facebook, but no, she's, right. uh, she doesn't she's need bu- us anymore. She's busy. We should, but she, you know, she needs us, but she's, you know, we got, we got to, Bring up the next batch. yeah it's time to lift up the next AOCs right and and this is and together we will do that thank you so much Zaina for being here thank appreciate you. it okay. thank you guys for having me you bet you bet and like I said stick around or get out of here whatever you need to do we're just gonna move on with some other stories appreciate it yeah thanks guys awesome all right let's see what do we got next Laura do you want to talk about gear do you just want to go into gear um... Yeah, you know what? Let's just do that. If it's in my slides right there. I just want to show everybody I've got you know, my my latest, you know, Birdie Swag t-shirt on, not me, us. That's and nice. we've got a whole um, store of merch with, that you can get anything you want. I think uh, Amos has got his red version of the same okay. today. Ouch. You're not, oh, there he is. There it is. There he is. Not me, yes. Oh, oh it looks nice and red. Let's see the black. The sunglasses. I lose the sunglasses a little bit on the, the dark blue. Yeah, but that's nice. Oh. That is nice. Anyway, so that, yeah, we'll have a link in the description. Oh, you know, I'll just drop a link in chat right now. Um, keep but us up there. You can get anything you want. You can customize it however you want. You can get whatever ever color you want. You can add shit to it. It's pretty neat. So it's Spreadshirt.com, great organization. No, the shirts are not necessarily made in the U.S. They are printed and shipped and marketed in, yeah, in the U.S. Though, from Henderson, Nevada. That's right. There you go. Right. So no, you're going to ask, and I wish that was you know the case, but you know All it's stuff it, you, know, you help uh, you help support us. We get a couple bucks off of every shirt to help us keep the lights on. So please buy. Bernie's if you want to buy more, uh, uh, like union or local or small uh, shop, the uh, watch the uh, Progressive Oregon on Sundays because mm-hmm. Larry talks about, um, and I think we actually had one of the ladies on. I can't remember. It's two crazy ladies or something like that. They're making mm-hmm. these really cool shirts. These really cool Bernie shirts. They're they're they've got the hair and like a rainbow kind mm-hmm. of thing going on. Oh, nice, uh, nice. Uh, and they've got a yeah, Etsy. Of- if you go on Etsy, there's tons of Bernie swag that people are making. I ordered a um, hundred round, you know, Bernie 2020 stickers with him with the, you know, the psychedelic in the glasses. And um, I'm just going to have those on hand to give to people who ask about my Bernie shirt. Yeah, there you that's go. my little, my little outreach. So yeah, buy, yeah, buy our stuff. That'd be cool. There you go. <laughs> buy our stuff. <laughs> nice, nice. We're going capitalist because we need money too, honestly. Although I do want to say, we're not going capitalist. I do want to say thank you to everybody that has been donating because Larry dropped mm-hmm. a note saying, my God, people are actually donating more, which is great because we, we need that. Um, uh, the solo's dead and I don't think we're going to revive it. It's just, it died? Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, we tried a Poor final solo. test. Tried a final test with the solo. Uh, we thought we had the problem fixed. We thought we were going to have to spend 500 bucks to uh, do this thing with the IPs. But um, it's just old. And one of the ports for the modems uh, it doesn't even work. It just kind of falls oh out. And, uh, yeah. So if that solo could talk, though, oh that's the gosh. one we sent to Standing Rock, right? That went everywhere. Yeah. It went everywhere. And, and, you know, Scott carried that all over the place. And he hated it the whole time, too. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I can but, remember these, yeah. Well, yeah. so you get the free demo version you know that's what you get it, it did a lot it actually did a lot when when it worked and it went to different places democracy spring was where it was first used mm-hmm. um, lots and lots in iowa we covered a lot of iowa events yeah. there a, a new solo was like a grand and that's just a solo all right mm-hmm. um i don't know that we're going to crowdfund that because i don't know that it's worth it for us to crowdfund a solo in support of candidates you know, yeah, it's like, what, I, what I are think we that we can, we can, we've got other things that we can do now with right. this, with this platform and uh, technology being the way it is and Zoom being so easy. Uh, we don't necessarily, and, and there's lots of, you know, lo- there's lots more coverage, particularly of Bernie events right now that uh, they're there never is. before. But so. we have increased our overhead because we've increased some of the things we're doing. And uh, so that doesn't mean stop donating because we're not going to do solo stuff. It means that we're going to be doing other stuff. Like I'm really hoping to work with BNC and their candidates to do some town halls and, mm-hmm. um, you know, work more closely with other candidates like Shahid Buttar and uh, uh, Mark Gamba, hopefully, mm-hmm. we'll work with. Um, yeah. So 
stick around and thank that's but just really i just want to thank everybody because that's cool you know that that um that you are donating and it's a very small group of people a very small select group of people so, <laughs> thank you, you so know much. and you know who you are you know who you are you know it's it's because uh, it's pretty much the same <laughs> people uh, but really all right so amos you've got a picture of nemo What's going yeah, on? This is a question we may ask ourselves in uh, just a couple of decades. Um, so this is not a new, this is not new information uh, so much as the fact that uh, it has not been disputed. It kind of like is not being repeated too often because people just, uh, it, it's not news. That's that's a problem. Right. Uh, but uh, ever since I, th I think this study has been conducted a few years ago. I think maybe 2006. It was another study in 2015, and those are large scale studies, and they are predicting that um, if we don't change anything, uh, salt water fishery will be dead, would be extinct in 2048. Uh, and that's that's of course very alarming. Um, basically, um, the, so far all of the uh, newer research that's been done, and, and let's be clear, it's very difficult to do this kind of research compared to uh, researching extension of uh, insects or uh, birds or whatever uh, you have it. Deep ocean uh, investigation is much more difficult because of it, the accessibility. Uh, so um, they have actually taken on that that last big study that they've done. Uh, they had an analysis of a hundred, uh, had 32 experiments that uh, were done over uh, a wide range of uh, different uh, regions um, for a thousand years of uh, history on 12, 12 coastal regions. After that, they looked at fishery data from 64 large marine ecosystems. And after that, they looked at recovery data from 48 uh, protected ocean areas. So this is like a, a really substantial analysis that they've done. That's not some kind of a little study. It's been a cooperation between uh, universities in the US and the UK and so forth. Um, and uh, so far, it's not that it's something predicted, it's something that's already happening. So uh, from a commercial perspective of uh, food uh, production, 29% of, uh, of edible fish, edible seafood, is already, uh, have already declined by 90%. And that's, if those numbers don't hit you over the head, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, this is already what's what's happened and we're, we're just looking at uh, the future and uh, interpolating all this data um, so it, and it's not that the loss of species is just gradually slowly happening it's just accelerating it's faster and faster and, um, and the more we wait the more difficult is going to be able to reverse that inertia absolutely absolutely and this is the most depressing slide you've got in here. <laughs> that's, so that's actually my slide of hope because uh, <laughs> <laughs> one percent. I, yeah. I didn't want everybody to come out with a complete <laughs> uh, meltdown here. So uh, though the ocean is protected by one percent at this current time, uh, there's there's still hope. And, and that is based on uh, research that's been done about uh, declining fisheries around the U.S. and so forth after uh, fishing and, and some other uh, means have been taken to to uh, to reduce the die off and the the uh, what the lessons are that the oceans are much more resilient than uh, than we feared so th there's still hope we can we we can we have a, an outside chance uh, of avoiding a complete extension of uh, all uh, sea water uh, species and uh, I, I guess that's what we have to uh, count on in terms of optimism right now we have an outside chance of preventing the death of our ocean basically 
Yes, we've been so hard at work as destroying it, and we're still marching in that direction. That uh, even such a strong force of of uh, revival and, and and survival by nature is 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 a question. I, I I'm not sure if there's anybody uh, nowadays that can uh, say for sure that uh, we're. That we could reverse it if if we wanted to, but we have as a species of hope, we have to believe in that. We've there's always this discussion of uh, 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 right wing people, uh, uh, climate change deniers that say, well, uh, there's there's always been uh, dire uh, warnings and that's not uh, come to pass. Uh, they bring up the uh, the example of the ozone layer, for example. And the fact that the ozone layer is is uh, getting uh, repaired and in um, in may we may be out of danger with that by the 2080s is just a testimony to the fact that we can reverse change, and the fact that we banned uh, aerosols and so forth has has done a great deal of uh, of uh, help, basically. So that's that's yeah. Uh- so the, the two idiot arguments I've always heard are the ozone's getting better and the oceans really haven't risen as much as they claim they're going to. And it's like and neither one of those two things are factor in the climate crisis right now. You know, right. But but what I'm saying is that uh, the example of the ozone layer is yeah. just the, the reverse of what they're trying to make out of it. Uh, it's not an example of uh, a, a, a false warning. Uh, it's It's an example of the fact that we were able to take measures to to curb that disaster uh, and, and we could we could do the same with regards to the ocean and with regards to global climate change but we have to have that uh, that revolutionary uh, change in the industry and and the, the force behind it or a time machine force behind. or a time machine we're probably better off with the force you're right though there's a good report uh, and and you know i've seen that with the 2048 with the fisheries and it's they're being pushed a lot now um, so what are they going to, what, what do you guess they're going to suggest for a solution? Stop eating so much fish. I guess that's going to be the next thing out of the guardian, how humans well, need to stop eating fish to save our oceans. Right? Well, there's, there's been suggestions and not necessarily a bad idea, but it's not, uh, an old saving idea is to, to eat more invasive species. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. But you know, you know, it's not the point. They always go for a band aid on a bullet wound. Right. Right. Like, so it's, yeah. Anyway, it's it came up like eat the fish. It's like the 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 eating of you know the the invasive species. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's a little backwards. Thank you, Almas. Good, good report. I like that. Nice pictures. Depressing, but nice pictures. Shit. Yep. that. <laughs> Marcus, you're next. Yeah. Thank you. What are you talking about? We are going over to Germany and we're looking into the Social Democratic Party of Germany and what's going on there, you know, and um, you all know that I don't support any of the mainstream parties here in Germany. I've uh, I fled to the satire party, the party. And um, but uh, there is a big furor uh, um, the last three days in Germany because there's someone coming up uh, with very, very strange thoughts and ideas. And uh, yeah, the people are getting mad here. I'm talking about Kevin Kuhnert. Kevin Kuhnert is um, the uh, the chairman of the Young Socialist Party. This is the um, the, the youth of, um, the youth chapter, if you want, so of the Social Democratic Party in Germany. And he has certain ideas, which strangely remind me of uh, Bernie, but a lot more left than Bernie is in the US. And so I'm asking, feel the calf. And here's what what is it about? And uh, please, John, show the first slide. Well, he gave an interview, um, and uh, this interview uh, caused a lot of trouble for him here in Germany. Let me just quickly put it on here so I can look it up so he came in an interview uh and he said that uh he we would need collective uh, collectivization he says without collectivization overcoming capitalism is unthinkable 
And for me, it is less important whether on the BMW doorbell sign it says state automobile company or cooperative automobile company, or whether the collective decides that BMW is no longer necessary in this form. So you got to know that BMW in Germany is a holy cow, you know. Um, <laughs> the majority lies, <laughs> lies in the hands of the Quant family. And, uh, of course, they are prof uh, pro profiting largely from, uh, from what the BMW sold on, on cars. You know, I think in, in the past year it was about uh, uh, 1.1 billion or so. There, there, are, there are some of the super rich families here in Germany. And he even goes on, you know, if you show the next slide, please. He says um, um, that it was important, what important was that the distribution of BMW's profits should be democratically controlled, which meant there could be no capitalist owner of the company. You know, this is a very, very, uh, uh, very, very um, challenging thinking for us here in Germany. I can imagine even more in America, if you can imagine that the big, uh, the big corporations, you know, had no owner anymore, but the gains would go in, into the favor of the society. Yeah, it sounds communist. It's communist. It sounds it sounds completely communist, and this is exactly this is exactly what the reactions on this were, you know. <laughs> and this is this is not all what he's talking about. He also goes further, you know. And this is very interesting, you know. In Germany, we also have a, a housing problem. Meanwhile, here, especially in the big cities like Berlin or Cologne, or even in Düsseldorf, it is it is very very expensive to live here. But it's hard to find to find a good place to live, to find apartments or something. And he says, Kühnert also called for an end to property ownership as a business model. Thinking it through, logically, everyone should own no more living space than, them, than they themselves live in, right? And now imagine what this would, would be, uh, mean for the, for the housing market or for a lot of people, you know, who are doing nothing anymore and only getting the rents from the apartments that they are, they are selling, right? They are renting. And, um, well... You can imagine what's going on in our capitalistic society in Germany, where the where it is uh, it is sacrosanct that the capitalistic model is untouchable here. You know, this is how our economy works. You know, we need growth of our economy, growth, growth, growth. This is exactly what our politicians are uh, are talking about for for decades now. You know, and uh, it is is interesting to see how big the forum was to these uh, to those ideas of thoughts. It was a moderate interview uh, uh, Kevin Kuhnert gave, and he thought, "Let's think about it. What's going wrong in our society? What's going on ro uh, worldwide?" You know, and he came to the same conclusion. I can, I also come, you know, that it is a capitalistic system which would prevent anything which would save us, you know. And the reactions in Germany were horrible, you know. This shows our next slide. Uh, I'm sorry, this is slide 21, please. You know, even from his from his own mother party, from the Social Democratic Party, uh, party you know, there is the General Secretary Lars Klingbeil. You know, he is describing all this as a social utopia. You know, and there is Johannes Kahr. You know, he's also a member of the Bundestag here. What terrible nonsense! What is he smoking? It cannot be legal. You know, and oh, it goes on and on and on. And uh, the CSU, the the, the right wing party of the of the Conservative Party, they say uh, this is, uh, they should they should leave the social democrats and join the left party and you know they um they do not they they deny even to think about uh, what is going on in our society and what our economy does to our society you know there is a complete blockage what this concerns you know of course there are a few voices who say no let's think about it and it is it is it is not it is not uh, a false that he has these thoughts and what is the clue of this all is what is most disappointing and says a lot about the state uh, the, Demo the social democrats are in in Germany. If you look at what makes the Social Democratic Party, you know, if you look at, for example, at the so-called Godesberger program which was valid until, from uh, 1959 out until 19, uh, uh, 1989. This was where uh, the communist model of the USSR and uh, the bloc broke down finally. You know, this was the big win for capitalism. You know? And all this ended the program. And this is here, the program said, um, um, the Goldberg program, which ditched the goal of toppling capitalism in favor of reforming capitalism. You know, it, 
this is exactly what the origin of the Social Democrat Democratic Party was in Germany. And if you see all those uh, experts, all those professional politicians, you know, who are ob uh, obviously don't have a clue anymore, you know, what the Social Democratic Party in Germany stood for, you know, it is it is more demasking uh, than anything else, you know. And I hope that the discussion the discussion goes you now very very angrily and uh, very heavy here in in Germany for three days. I hope this. Uh, this would not end and he goes on with this and this might be a, f a good future for kevin kunert in the social democratic party once he gets into the party he's now in the, in, in the in the youth section of it he's in the what the, the youth section in, in, is a in, youth in, in the youth in the youth chapter of the social democratic party how old is he's he a young, he's a young socialist he's 29 years old wow good for him so am, am I, if I understand this right, let's see if I get this, because this is a parallel to the United States and FDR. To the Democratic Party, exactly. Right? right? Exactly. So the, your, your socialist Democrats used to really want to dismantle capitalism. And then they all forgot because they started sucking money from capitalism. And yes, and, and and look, it ended in 1989. You know, when communism broke down, USSR broke down. You know, this was the big win for capitalism, and it was never questioned anymore since right. that. Right. Yay! We saved ourselves from communism. Let's all be enslaved yes. and work for the rest of our lives. Exactly. All right. Interesting. Good. I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if it's okay. Show everybody your shirt. Because you were doing ah, uh, XR, yes, right? Yes. Talk about you met yes. some. Yes, it was, you know, after I was unfortunately sick last week and I could not attend the, uh, the die-in uh, which I uh, had planned and uh, film it. Uh, I, I met, Dennis is also here in Germany. He's with me. He's sitting next year. Come on we, camera, we, Dennis. We did the serious stuff. Come on, Dennis. Get over here. Dennis, Dennis, they want to see us on camera. Zane is gone. Come we don't, on have, to, we don't have to be professional anymore. We can... <laughs> come on over here. Come on, come on over here. Yeah. Here's Hi, Dennis. Dennis. Yeah. And today we, uh, we went to a Parents for, for Future, which is the parent, parental section of Fridays for Future here in Germany, and had some nice talks to people who were, uh, who, uh, were there. And uh, yeah, and it was good to see that there are more people caring, though the majority, uh, we found out, is not interested in climate. Everything is cool. It was rainy today. It was quite cold. So they don't, didn't have, have to worry about yeah. climate here. Awesome. Today. <laughs> awesome. So glad. I'm so glad you guys are uh, doing that. And, uh, yeah. Thank you for being here. You gotta do what you have to do. <laughs> yes, that's yes. right. Where's my fourth shot? I've lost yeah. my shots. There it is. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm not so worried to come quickly back to Amos uh, about the, the fishing crisis. You know, uh, it is more that we only have 10 years, you know, and who cares what's going on in 2048, right? No, no. no. <laughs> I'm sorry to say this. No, no. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, what are you going to yeah, say? Yeah, right. <sighs> What are we going to be eating in 10 years? I, I tried jackfruit last night, and I was not happy with it. I'll just say that. So. Virtual fish sticks out of, I don't know what, seagrass, I don't know. Jackfruit, is that the one that's kind of kind of meaty? Yeah, texture? it's supposed to have a meaty texture, and I thought it was nothing like they described and tasted nasty. So um, either I really messed up cooking it, or I'm just not a vegan. <laughs> well, I've heard it's one of those things that kind of, it just takes on whatever flavors you put in it it doesn't have a whole whole lot of it's really sweet so you have to match oh, really? the sweet yeah it's like juicy fruit gum kind of it's really sweet and, and so i made it but i i bought smoked jackfruit and they're like great in tacos all right let's make some straight tacos and we'll dump a bunch of sauce and stuff on it hey this tastes like jackfruit sweetness with <laughs> mexican spices Ew. it's, it's, it's Ew. not supposed to be a gummy but uh, no it can be great food if you eat it fresh or if you uh, you, you can even cook the uh, uh, bake the uh, seeds and they're kind of like chestnuts it's it's oh. really a versatile food all right well i'd I try that i try everything new in the alternative meat section you know mm -hmm. give it a go that's my effort you did know. you hear they're doing impossible burgers now at burger king i i did i did i thought i thought that's great so there's a bunch mm -hmm. of uh, impossible burgers at burger king del taco has the ground beef from beyond burger now and so okay. as soon as i see that in my safeway I'll, i'm gonna grab that and give that a go uh you've got the brat the bratwurst 
which are sort of between bratwurst and Italian sausage from the Beyond Burger. Um, A and W <laughs> root beer is pushing, or A and W uh, whatever those that, that's the, they're pushing uh, uh, the, the Impossible Burger, the, the the Bleeding Burger. They've got that going too. Yeah. Right. So everybody. Schultz says try it with bacon. Try what with bacon? Jackfruit. Jackfruit. I, think. <laughs> I, I can't. People that like the whole maple bacon combo mm. thing. Yeah, not me. Anyway, so yeah, I'm trying, but I'm trying. I'm trying to do the that stuff. We're, we're all into that. Good for you, John. Why not? As soon as I see Exxon liquidated, Rex Tillerson's head on a spike, and all of that money used to save our planet, I will eat whatever the fuck you put in front of me. I swear <laughs> to God. I swear to God. Bugs, I don't care. Oh, be, be careful. The, the, <laughs> the, the same bu uh, bet once Werner Herzog did, you know? Mm -hmm. And it ended, he had to eat a shoe, and he did. Wow, that would be hard to do. He did. <laughs> By the way, hi, all 47 of you. We've had a pretty good crowd here today. 47? Yeah. Holy moly. It's a lot of people. It's, and this was went well. I mean, almost did a great presentation. Mark, everybody did a great presentation today. Yay. Good interview. Yay, us. What yeah. a good show. Our, our impromptu shows, we don't even know what we're going to talk about till the day before because everything changes That's throughout right. the week. That's right. All right, I have a few like short things to talk. What time is it? Oh my god, we're gonna get out of here like on time. It's insane. Nice. No, you're kidding. Amazing. Yeah, this whole limiting us to one store thing was a good idea, John. Thank you. <laughs> I I know. All right, so where am I? It's not ominous. I got to put me on. There we go. And this is where the ratings drop. All right, so uh, real quick, just a few stories that I thought were interesting. Following on the climate thing, UK Parliament declares climate emergency along with a couple other places, Wales, Scotland, um, I don't know. So this, is the, this is the next thing, declaring a climate emergency. <laughs> now I'm waiting to see what that means. All right. Nothing. So Greta Thunberg went in there, she went to Parliament, she did her speech. Parliament was like, oh, bloody well, good, let's save the planet, everybody. Declaring a climate emergency. And now we need to see them get off their ass and actually enact some legislation. So, John, John, I'm, I'm sorry job. to interrupt you. Think, think about this, you know. They even can manage to get out of fucking Europe. What? So what? what they, the, 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 the Brits can even manage to get out of Europe. How do, the, do you oh. think they, should, they, they could <laughs> do this? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, me, me neither. Good question. I mean, I think it's a good thing. So they, you, they haven't left, they, they haven't left, which is good, because they really can't at this point. You guys need to band together and take over the United States. So keep that in mind. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So climate emergency is being declared in countries and this is a good thing as soon as we see those countries put down things they're going to do um meeting your paris climate agreement goals now that we know that the paris climate agreement goals are worthless um isn't going to cut it right so let's see what the uk does move forward get rid of may put corbett in there these guys do some <laughs> stuff now i don't know the full details but they did just have a big election over there and there was some oh, massive yes. fucking changes. oh there was some interesting results in yeah. that oh yeah thousand uh seats lost by the tories and a whole bunch of greens picked up a whole bunch of i, I don't know what they are like liberal, liberal democrats liberal independents, Dem independents were the winners and tories <laughs> and even the labor party lost big the, the yeah, tories the labor party. was so, tremendous yeah. Why did the Labour Party lose big? Wasn't isn't that Jeremy Corbyn's group of people? Yes, exactly. Because the because the British people uh, had the impressions that both parties did not enough to to either Brexit or to remain. You know? They're both established uh, establishment parties. Yeah. Okay. The Psych Democrats are Corbyn, Corbyn, Corbyn never said clearly that he wanted. Uh, he, he's against the European Union. But he never said it officially that he would remain or he's, he's trying to make an extra deal, you know, to, to stay halfway in there or not. He, he was he was not uh, he was not straight in, in, in his uh, in his attitude and in, in what he wants. So this was punished. Interesting. All right. All right. Well, looking forward to hearing more on that. Thank you for everybody in the Slack that's dropping information on that. Katie and um, Cindy and everybody. And, and that, that's another thing real quick on the Slack. Um, all the volunteers that are in there that still hang out, chat, all that stuff. If you if you want to get involved with things, let me know because we're trying something new this time. And basically, I'm going to farm out talent and kind of be the broker between candidates that we're working with and you guys. So if you want to get involved directly with one of the campaigns we're working with, let me know. 
Um, but that's really what we're going to focus on other than, you know, is, is really trying to work with the groups like we've been trying to do for four years now. But it's all kind of connected. Work with BNC, work with JD, work with all these groups and candidates to kind of support them the way they need. Um, and so if you want to get involved with that, uh, hit, hit me up in Slack if you're a volunteer in our Slack. Right? All right. What's next? Just real quick. This is what happens when you put pressure on your government at the state level. All right. Um, waiting to see these all get passed. But here's Portland mayor proposes half a million dollars for homeless response team. So that we can actually get some people with compassion and training dealing with homeless and mental illness instead of cops just shooting them and being dicks. And so I think this is a great idea. It's a progressive measure. The mayor of Portland's been under a lot of shit recently because... Yeah, he's a big man anyway. And anyway, so this is good. This is progressive movement. Senate takes up $2 billion education funding. This is also in Oregon. The only reason this has happened is because progressives in the House and new progressives in our Oregon State Senate went to the old ones, Peter Courtney and Ginny Burdick, and said, you either start moving on some legislation or we're going to boot your ass out so fast. And things seem to be moving. Pretty amazing. Here's another one. <laughs> that just cracks me up in general. The new Bernie Sanders app that just came out for organizing is basically Bernie trying to, to build his, um, uh, his van voter database, right? We need, a, we need a van database of real progressives and people that are interested and that's not under control of the Democratic National Party. Right? This headline wins all awards. Um, this is uh, Ada Chavez. <laughs> New Bernie Sanders app democratizes organizing and panics people unfamiliar with organizing. <laughs> if you remember, if you remember ever this came out, oh my God, it's asking for information. These people are going around asking for our information. How dare they come directly to our face and ask us for this information? Mm -hmm. I'd prefer a telemarketer. Right. So. Well, what's interesting though, is this, this is the Bernie Sanders app and there, there is something because I went to the organizing meeting last week and we got the introduction to the app and everybody yeah. signed up and they do have a kind of a, a narrative around it, which, which caught my attention is like, add everybody, you know, and it's like, you know what, I think it should, they should, they should have it be, this is a canvassing tool to add the information of the people that you meet. But it, they, it, it sounded like go and add every single person that you know in your whole life to this app so that we have them there. And I think that that disturbed you know, some people who who didn't think that that was a good way to position it. So could be. But I think it's, but it's an amazing canvassing tool. It is no different than a clipboard with, with voter registration that you get from the databases and you're checking people off and finding out what their stuff is. It's just an app for it. And there was just some interesting- It was, but I, I guess, I, I can see that I can see people thinking that's weird. And for me, mm -hmm. I guess what it ties into is um, on Facebook when they say, you just did this, share that with all your fucking friends or select all the people that you want to have do this too. It's the mm -hmm. same. And yeah. people seem to think, oh, no, no, when you're talking about me and my address, that's somehow sacred information that nobody else can find. But on Facebook, you go ahead and do whatever. And we got to stop with that connect because your address is not sacred. Yeah. It's not hidden. It's not secret. Your information, none of that information. Yeah. Is. And, and it's but, nothing different than a canvasser would ask for you at a polling table any anywhere. Right. But I think it was. the And somebody says, well, it's right for right for abuse. And it's like, what? I'm just going to go add a bunch of fake names in there or add people, you know, why would we want to add wrong information, you know, right. like non Bernie? So why would we want to add like a non Bernie supporter to his database? That would not be helpful to him. Um, I don't, I, it's just, it's a new thing. And it people is. are going to, people are going to, haters are going to hate on what's new. And especially they don't understand it, especially when they hear this, uh, you know, a narrative spin on it that makes it sound like something nefarious. It sounds like you're signing up for Amway. And mm -hmm. that's exactly so. Okay, I get it. And people don't mm -hmm. even know what Amway is. Yeah, right? uh, yeah and it's, it's a little. If they've got work to do on it as well. It is not a mobile app. It is a. It is a mobile friendly website app. Uh, but you can't. Have, you don't have an icon for it. For instance, on your phone, you have to go and I have it bookmarked in my browser on my phone, and it fills out just like an app once you get there. But I think having it as a true app will will be a, a nice step up, and I, I'm sure they're probably uh, working on that. True. 
True. But yeah. John, John is correct that it's like it's not not a new thing. V, uh, Van is already doing it. The yeah. only difference here is that it's not being owned by the democratic establishment. Uh, and and other than that, it, it's no different. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it is weird. Right. And it, and that is uncomfortable to do that stuff. I will admit that because I'm not doing it. I mean, it's just not not what I do, but I'm not you know, much of a social person in that sense, mm -hmm. you know, but we're, we're trained not to share that information or do that kind of stuff. Well, it's yeah, telemarketing, exactly. Right? Online privacy is, is yeah. a huge concern and should and should be. But it's yeah. it's no different than if, you know, you're someone's at a table with a laptop. You know, oh, what's your name? What are you concerned? You know, what are you interested in? People are doing that all the time or writing it on a piece of paper. Right. It's yeah, it's right. you know, whatever. They don't have a whole lot to bitch about. So that's. That's the bitch du jour. No, no, and, and right, and and also difference being, we're not trying to sell them Tupperware. We're trying to save their fucking lives. So, right, right, right. right. And that would be like exactly. mm, uh, just a bonus. Anyway, you want to kick into last week on UHM? Who me? You or do you want me to do it? Am I supposed to do this? I never remember who's Which... was supposed to do this. Me? All right, last week for me. What? Who wants to do it? Well, you're the, you're the common denominator from all this. And what is the, which, okay, we had. I don't know. We had the, uh, the organizing kickoff happen, right? Well, we had, well, we had, um, yeah. And I, I went to that. Mine was very small, but it was, but it was interesting. I believe that you, whenever you're put together with, with strangers that you've never met, there's connections that are made that are important. Yeah. 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 You so I met Rajiv, that. met our host was Mark. He's a local musician. He's been a burner for a long time. Cool. We're already talking about, okay, when, when there are rallies or organizing, um, events, you know, like we've got a, we've got a connection with music, you know, there. And also, uh, Rajiv, who is, who's in chat right now. Hello, Rajiv, Bushan. Hey, Rajiv. Uh, I, I met him there as well. And he's just got all kinds of interesting ideas. So it's great to meet new people. Um, after that, though, I went and, and explored what some of the other groups were actually in my area, which I probably should have done before. And there is a whole Bernie Sanders for Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz for Bernie Sanders group that um, I volunteered for. Yeah. And we also, um, I haven't heard much back from them. They're just kind of ramping up again from, because they, they were formed in 2015. But that's a big group. They had a huge event that, last saturday but for some reason i was not at that one i was at the one i was meant to be at That's um right. so it was great and i've seen a lot of energy um coming out of that I can't believe it's only been uh, a week but it's nice and and also we had our um uh, our meeting you know more you know morning meetings with uh, shahid and his his team did you want to do you want to play his were you going to play his video or is that part of what? I don't know. Maybe we'll play it at the end. Maybe we'll, we'll okay. go out with it after we hear Chewbacca say goodbye. No. We'll see. No. <laughs> so is that? And then last week we had. If you, do you want to talk about uh, Larry's shows? Sure. Yeah. We could. Do, this is how we'll do that. The last week from now on, we'll just sit like yeah. this and go through cards and then decide yeah. who talks. This is yeah. better. All right. So last week we had. Uh, well, Larry talked to Mark Gamba, and uh, I did a little bit too. But is Mark Gamba mm -hmm. and. Um, who else was on there with the, it was um kurt schrader no patrick no. patrick starnes patrick starnes okay. uh and and uh mark amber mark amber is running against kurt schrader patrick oh that's starnes, right okay Got it. Uh, I knew the name was yeah uh, patrick starnes is dealing with uh, uh money and politics and and mark's uh, uh very much sounds like a, a progressive burner we'll wait to see um he's not going to take any pack money corporate money uh, it was a good conversation. And if you're an Oregonian, uh, we really need to get behind Mark because we need to get rid of Kurt, right? That's pretty simple. So that's good. Um, and then Larry did this, Robert's Rules on Recalls and Removals uh, when the romance is over because uh, it looks like we're already about to boot the chair for basically not following the rules. Um, lot going on there but previous chair didn't follow the rules previous admin didn't really follow the rules the bylaws of the democratic party of oregon and uh didn't care and when larry taylor and some other people read the rules were like hey you're not following the rules and they were like so what and so larry started doing these things and now it's gotten to the point where we're going to force them to follow the rules or we're trying to force them to follow the rules with the new chair who we thought was gonna be different than the last chair and it turns out no so I don't know how far this is going to go, but uh, Larry did this show talking about how you do this. And there are ways to go about removing your chair. And it's not as difficult as it sounds. And the, the key point is the chair is not special. 
the chair isn't an anointed God. They're not some kind of Jesus. They're not anything but a human being that's got put into a role that can be removed from that role immediately if they're an asshat. So once you have a chair in power, don't go, oh, it's the chair. I certainly don't want to go against the chair. No, they're just a fucking human being that if they don't do their fucking job, gets the boot. And that's the way they need to be treated as an employee, right? But the moment they take the title, they, they stick a crown on their head and decide they rule the universe, whatever they fucking rule, you know? And, and that's, that's really needs to change. That attitude needs to change amongst the chairs and the entire admin of the DPO and pretty much the entire Democratic Party. Like, we, we, we got rid of a monarchy, but we replaced it with a group of people that treat it like a monarchy. And we, and we really need to ditch that. So um, I encourage everybody who's irritated and frustrated with their Democratic Party or whatever freaking party you're a member of or anybody who doesn't follow the rules of their party that's run by Robert's Rules, which most of our things are, watch this, get involved, learn parliamentary procedure, bring it to the floor. You, you, this is what works. I make a motion, right? And if the chair doesn't follow those rules, then you can basically let her, hey, everybody in the room, this is democracy. And if we're not going to follow basic tenets of democracy, what's next? Right. So anyway, I found that kind of important. Lastly, Laura, we talk about the need to impeach. Well, that was pretty awesome. We it had a was. special um, interview with Shahid Bittar we about did. the need to impeach. He's a constitutional lawyer, has some very specific uh opinions about uh, impeachment. I was on the shelf about, on the fence about it. I wasn't uh, sure what I thought about it. I thought it would be, you know, kind of just another distraction from work that our government actually needs to do. But he made a really <laughs> strong case by why we need to hold our elected officials accountable and start this and pointed out how Nancy Pelosi, who he's running against, is really kind of holding up the uh, holding up the impeachment train. And so it's like, why, if they are saying that Trump is so bad, aren't they taking the extra mile to do something about it? Or is it just Trump bad, Trump bad, Trump bad, we must resist. And I, one of the things he really said was you know, that resistance isn't, you know, he's, he's from a time and, and organizations that really did actively you know, resist bad policy. And the uh, quote unquote hashtag resistance right now is not that. It's right. complaining about it, but not doing anything about it. So I, I highly recommend people to go back to, back to the channel, go, uh, watch it. Very interesting uh, conversation. Had... Yeah, I agree. I was kind of on mm -hmm. the fence until I really dug into it and listened to what he had to say. And I'm like, yeah, it, it absolutely mm -hmm. has to happen. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Nancy Pelosi is absolutely weak for not doing it. His line, right, that, it, that it's offensive that resistance has been turned into a hashtag. Yeah, right? yeah he said what the, the uh, allegiance to the beltway over the country is the root of every problem we've got there you right go. now. Yeah. Just great lines. He was really mm -hmm. just on it. Yeah, I was having fun um, uh, quoting him on Twitter that night and got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, traction from those. They really uh, yeah. made, it, made it an effect. His team's going to be as formidable as AOC's social mm -hmm. team. I, yeah. I feel. I feel. I think so. I I'm, think he's got. He's on the. He's he is boots on the street and meeting his constituents. And boy, that is sure something that that Nancy is not. Imagine her walking the streets of San Francisco, which are covered him crap now it's really but he's right there and that's it and that's he's right. we, we we congratulate him for running because i don't know if you want to do that he says it's just that she's i've got a you know she is my representative and i don't believe she represents me or my city right and his, his district is you know if you're not familiar is basically the city of san francisco and the surrounding area so it's a it's a very tightly focused um, constituency and one that is one that there's one percent of it there's very rich san franciscans and business owners or whatever that she represents just fine and that's been enough to slide her through i think that you get an aoc level um organization against her and you will see her doing a crowley oh yeah i i agree although she's and that'll be beautiful she's the next she's the next up on the rung right she's number three Mm-hmm. Right. Crowley was, he was number he was number four. Yeah. So, yeah, she's so, next. And the uh -huh. only thing that blows is that we and the same thing kind of happened with AOC. Did you notice they heard this on the they said this in the show. They said you traded. We're, I think within their strategy, they were saying it. We're trading somebody with an immense amount of power for somebody that doesn't have that power. Even, yeah. you know, it's just but they're going to work for us. Yeah. Right? And that's, got that's, people. that's the trade off. Right. If we yeah. get rid of Nancy, OK, she has all this power and all this whatever connected. Yeah, but it doesn't work for us. 
No. All right? It doesn't work for us. So uh, uh, anybody that says, well, we need Nancy to what? Back Trump? Because that's what she's done. She supported no. Trump more than she supported the idea of working against him. Yeah. No. Nancy's canceled. And, and as no, we no. talked about, if Ryan Knight, proud resistor, and the other centrists are banging on Nancy for this, Jesus, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's we are the Democratic Party is united against <laughs> the, the establishment to, to prosecute him. It's it's uh, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Anyway, moving on. We're almost out of here, everybody. I seriously promise. Tomorrow, DPO 2020 delegate selection plan, which was apparently decided yesterday in a meeting. And I don't know what went down. I'm waiting to hear from Larry what went down. There's been a lot of shit happening. Um, uh, you know, I'll let Larry get into full details, but it hasn't been civil within the DPO, not towards Larry. Uh, and then uh, I don't know what they're what they've done. They there's they, they, they just decided they were going to make a plan. And I have no idea what happens. It's very interesting. Uh, uh, after all the complaints that they received and not moving forward with it properly, they've got one. They voted on it last night. And so we're going to find out what it is. And uh, I'm sure Larry will break down. Uh, whether it's, uh, you know, within the rules or not. I would be surprised if it is. Um, and then, when's this? 16th. What's yeah. the 16th? What is today? Is this no, the that's old not card? The, that's, that's not the old this card, is the, right? You got the, you got the old card, May 7th. I got the old card. I just so. saw his face. It's May 7th. That's right. <laughs> So to pay no attention to the card, which is probably you can't ignore anyway. the card. Um, uh, yes, this is Joshua Collins. He is running for uh, Congressional District 10 in Washington State, which is the Olympia, kind of the Olympia to Tacoma section of the state. And he is 25 years old. He's a truck driver. He's running on a very strong progressive platform. He is burning it up on social media right now, particularly Twitter, introducing himself and his ideas. He's got a lot of them. I know that he is interested in being a brand new Congress candidate. So if you are in his his area and want to nominate, you know, give him a shout out, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, we'll definitely be watching this interview. So we will meet him on uh, Tuesday evening. And then we are uh, haven't confirmed yet. We were also talking to Nathan Clay, who is running in Colorado, and to Audrey Denny, who is running in District 1 in California. We're trying to get them from the next two weeks after that. Do we have? Oh, okay, I was right. Emails with Nathan Clay. So this is great. We yeah. got people reaching out, and thank you, Laura, mm -hmm. for doing all of this booking and scheduling because it's a, a big thing in the ass. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a candidate that wants to be on here, progressive candidate, info at uphillmedia.org. Uh, drop us a line, or, or tweet at us on Twitter, or you know, on reach out on Facebook. Um, we're, we are anxious to work with you, but we're, we don't have a lot of time to chase you. So if you are wanting to be on the show, communicate and uh, keep communicating. We'll get you booked. There you go. That's it. And yeah, we uh, we work the low bench for uh, mm -hmm. um, Democratic candidates. Right. Yeah. So that eventually they can get on CNN. And yeah, like we're their incubator. We're yeah, incubator. we're their incubator. Yeah, we get them. Right. We get them all gussied up and send them off into the world. That's right. Little nestlings. Feel good story. Yay. CNN does, you know, the, the news does feel good stories, puppies and whatnot at the end of the shows to make you forget about everything. Uh, anarchists flood the office of Portland lawyer who represented ICE union. Basically just stuck a hose through the mail slot, turned it on, fucked up his office. I love this kind of stuff because it really didn't hurt anybody, but it certainly fucked with his world. And anybody who's willing to represent ICE should have their world fucked with. All right. Uh, <laughs> When people say climate change isn't real or it's not affecting us now, I'm like, well, this fucking country plans to move its capital city because it's sinking. But yeah, it's not affecting anything. <laughs> it's like the fish, <laughs> you know? Yeah, they, 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 they say the capital is sinking, you know? They, they, they did not say the tides are rising. Right, it's not because, yeah. You know? <laughs> it's just God's making it sink. That's, yeah. If you didn't watch the movie, go watch the movie. There's so many things in it that just... You remember? Want to show? Want to show the trailer, John? No, I'm, we're not showing the trailer because it's Netflix, and I don't want to trust it. Uh, okay. And I want to show Shahid's video, honestly. Yes. But the, right. the big, uh, the big uh, uh, sad news is that the original Chewbacca voice is dead. Um, Peter Mayhew, and what a nice guy. And I was never one of the kids that could actually make a Chewbacca sound without getting a whole bunch of snot in my throat. So uh, <laughs> congratulations to all those others who had the capability when they were young. Uh, mm -hmm. It wasn't me. 
Um, not usually well, not just the voice. Being, so. He was the actor in the suit. Right? Well, right, that too. You yeah. know, but you know, <laughs> everybody knows the voice. Yeah. And and, and so to, to end, we're just going to listen to this in sadness. I thought this was cute. Um, I can't play any of the actual sounds of Chewbacca because uh, of copyright. It's all Star Wars owned, and you can't play Chewbacca sounds, or you will um, get you know you're shut down so uh we're going to listen to other sounds of of things that sound that's everyday objects that actually sound like the chewbacca sound and if i had known this i would have found a way to cheat as a kid um thought this was good <laughs> I'm not so sure about this one. <laughs> there you go, everybody. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. That was the uh, the death throes of Chewbacca at the end there. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, so yeah. Um, again, just because of copyright. <laughs> that's the show, everybody. Amos, Marcus, Laura, thank you so much for being here. You are here. quite welcome. Yeah, he was. Bye, guys. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's about what I sounded. Amos, Amos, you you, you don't have uh, too, too much hair to do. I have to, I have to practice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're actually show Shahid's, Shahid's video, and then you have a song. No, we're just going to do Shahid's video and call it good because okay. it's a good okay. video. So we're going to go out of here with Shahid's video because it rocks. And uh, yeah. I can't remember the name of the, uh, the the guy who made it in the volunteer group, but wow, just wow. Good job, everybody. Go do something for a candidate, everybody, and have yes. a nice day. Thank you all for being here. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. That the underlying principles of our government will not be greed, will not be kleptocracy, will not be hatred or lies. Watch out, Washington. We the people are coming to take back Congress. And we're bringing with us some big ideas like Medicare for all and a Green New Deal. We did it in New York. We did it in Minnesota. We're doing it on the national stage. And now we're bringing that voice back to San Francisco. My name's Shahid Buttar. I'm running for Congress. I'm an immigrant. I'm a Muslim. I grew up in rural Missouri. When I was 16 years old, my family lost our house as I graduated from high school. I got my undergrad degree while working full time after 10 years of night school. Then I went to Stanford to study and teach law. I've fought for your rights for 20 years, from San Francisco to Washington, D.C. as a constitutional lawyer, policy advocate, writer, educator, and grassroots organizer. And now I'm running to serve the people of San Francisco by fighting corporate corruption in Congress. We don't have the corporate cash that's kept Nancy Pelosi in office for 30 years. In fact, we just don't take corporate money. That's why we're mobilizing the community, meeting in living rooms and neighborhood centers, why we're out in the streets fighting for change, demanding universal health care, fighting for your children and grandchildren's right to a future free from climate crisis and a government for, of, and by the people instead of the 1%. A voice for school teachers, working class families, and immigrants, the 99%. This movement is just getting started. After 30 years of the same representation, San Francisco deserves a champion willing to return our city to the front lines of the progressive movement. Our city stands for inclusion and pride, peace and justice, and environmental sustainability. We can't wait another 30 years for our leaders to evolve on climate change. Delay is no better than denial. The time for action was yesterday. America is the only advanced country in the world where getting sick can leave you homeless, and higher education buries people in debt for the rest of their lives. The only voices we need in Congress are ones who will take action to fix that. You have a choice. Either let profit-driven corporations destroy our future, or instead vote to reclaim this country for the people. Vote for Shahid Buttar in the March 2020 primary, and join our campaign in the meantime. 
We can protect the future, and we must. I'm Shahid Buchar. I approve this message, and I invite your support.